free speech rules here at Democratic Earth. Hello, welcome to this week's edition uh, of uh, Ubuntu BSD Linux Excel, the show that is a Linux show brought to you from a developer's perspective and not a review show. So let's just dive right in and get into the goodies. Uh, as I said in last episode, uh, I'm going to be taking the uh, astronomer's approach to uh, software development, starting out with a, with a general overview and then start focusing in uh, on a tighter environment. So last uh, episode I was talking about uh, the overall Linux environment and how there are so many environments to develop for. This week I'm going to take this perspective but I'm going to tighten the focus around one specific one specific application and this is where I'm going to sort of aim my starting point uh, for this process and I'm going to be skipping back and forth between this specific project and the larger overview uh, as as it needs to be and you can sort of see how I sort of uh, tackle the issue of developing in the Linux open source development environment. Uh, the, uh, the project I'm going to work on specifically that I chose to work on after looking at a variety of different uh, areas is I realized that uh, <laughs> you start where you need to most and since we're developing um, uh, web shows there really needs to be a uh, good sort of uh, video applet, uh, uh, video production suite and right now uh, I think it's good but it's in bits and pieces you have to do a lot of uh, stitching together in order to get things right uh, this one uh, reviewer that I like a lot, uh, her name is her channel's name is Nixie Pixel. She does she did a review over the last uh, three to four years, uh, beginning in 2008, of a video editing suite called uh, Caden Live. Uh, I primarily use this as an editor, although it's not exclusive. Because it doesn't do everything, and there are significant issues with uh, Caden Live, and that uh, need to be addressed so I think since since the Caden Live is my primary editor the one that I'll be using the most this is where I'm going to begin so looking at Caden Live here on the screen we're on the front page uh, it's aiming to be the Adobe Premiere Sony Vega Pro or Final Cut 10 or F Final Cut uh, whatever version you have uh, is aiming to be the op open source equivalent and Nixie Pixel in her review her first review compared it to that and said this is what it was going you know this was worth it but as the time progressed in 2010 she was still hopeful and then her last uh, review in 2012 sort of backed off the comparison between Caden Live and the professional software packages so as I said th this is where I'm going to begin 
uh, I'm going to take a look at Caden Live and then from there branch out into the uh, because uh, branch out into the various different areas. It's a good place to start because uh, it is video editing. You have to deal with both the video aspects of the system and the sound and the audio aspects of the, the sound aspects of the system. So this pretty much covers everything that you really need to have on a basic system in order to get it working properly. So from here, where do we go? Well, we see in the name itself, Caden Live. We, if you know the desktops, there's the two primary desktops that people like the most are GNOME and KDE. There's a new one now, and I'll talk about this later on. There are newer desktops coming up, like Unity, that aren't as popular. They're gaming comp popularity, but they're not yet quite where, where GNOME and KDE is. Uh, and this one, because it's Caden Live, it's K-D-E-N Live, it tells you right there, right from the beginning, right from its, uh, its title, its own name, that it's a KDE product. It's aimed at the KDE desktop. It is not a known product. It's not a Unity product. It's aimed specifically at the KDE desktop. But like all open source products, and this is the way open source is supposed to be, it's supposed to be uh, platform independent. That means you could run a KDE, a KDE application should be able to run on GNOME, it should be able to run on Unity, it should be able to run on any desktop environment or Linux environment out there, no matter what the platform is. But this is not what actually occurs. Because when you begin running uh, Kden Live, you begin running into, into a problem. And the, f the problem that, that pops up is an audio problem. You go to do a screencast, and all of a sudden, the cre screencast just dies and crashes on you and says, Whoop, there's an error. As you go to the... Kate and Live community, you come up onto the community, do a search, and you know your stuff is a, is, is a sound problem. And your sound system on Linux now is Pulse Audio. You type in Pulse Audio and you get a listing here. Now, if you actually went into Caden Live into the config files, into, the, in, into your configuration uh, menu, you, and look at the audio configuration, you don't see Pulse Audio there anywhere. You see choices for ALSA, A, A L S A or Jack. Those are the two options you have, Jack or also. And those are two other, <laughs> believe it or not, two other sound systems for Linux. Again, Linux, because it's open source, there isn't one solution for everything. There's a whole bunch of solutions all over the place, sort of independent, existing, and floating around. There's really, there have been attempts to bring things together and, and sort of thread things together. But it hasn't really been that successful. So when you go to the Caden Live, the Caden uh, Live uh, search page, and you look up Pulse Audio, and you start going through the search results, it says, "Well, remove Pulse Audio." Really? <laughs> That's the solution. So as you keep looking around to, tr to find more and more of a problem, uh, I actually didn't find a solution in Caden Live. The where I because I knew it was an audio problem. Uh, I went to the uh, desktop program that Caden Live. Caden Live isn't an all-encompassing program. It's a program that connects and depends on other programs. And Linux does this a lot. Linux programs don't specifically have to be all in one thing. It can sort of stitch things together, different areas of desktop together. So Caden Live actually is a stitching together of Melt, bl Blender, um, and a uh, and a program called Record My Desktop to do the screen captures to do a screencast. It's if you go into the individual program for the screencast, this is where you can actually resolve the audio problem and not actually have to remove uh, remove pulse audio. What you need to do is you need to go in and you need to get the depending program, the dependent program functioning 
with the hardware first and then as you get that done back your way out to uh, Caden Live and even then even if you get the root the base program work it doesn't necessarily mean Caden Live will work in that function uh, as that function anyways it, it will still sometimes crash the system so I found it's better uh, that to give up on the screencast in, within uh, Caden Live and just do screen capture within the base program uh, it has a similar problem when you're dealing with uh, captures from video cameras from web cameras it isn't exactly steady it doesn't know how to get down to the hardware and loses the hardware quite often so this is another area that has to be worked in and you, and you go into that and again you see that 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 this itself isn't a complete it's not a complete program the program itself isn't complete because it's depending on other things and if something is broken further on down the line not within Caden itself but broken within its dependent programs if there's a bug in there that bug will propagate through and make Caden life even worse so but I realized that uh, because Caden life is K a KDE product you have to go over uh, to uh, the Caden Live desktop, that's K the KDE or KDE.org, and you can look a look around and see what's there. And you see it's a, it's a fairly big and robust uh, uh, development group. But I'll show you if you go back to Pulse Audio, and you see here that the, the, if you go through the software, that it is using Pulse Audio as well. Most Linux distros use Pulse Audio. If you go to Pulse Audio. And we're here on the on, on the uh, on the front page of Pulse Audio. We see that the the news timeline in terms of how things are development, how things are developing, that things have stopped. The latest update was uh, October 2011, right? October 20th, 2011. And if you know the development, sometimes things are should be in, in a much uh, greater development cycle, but uh, this doesn't seem to be that. You should have, a, 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 you know, more activity here. And then what happens is some, as some people start leaving the project, because again, open source develops, depends on people who will develop for free. They're not getting paid for this. And if you run short of money, and then right now we're in a recession, so I think what we're seeing here is somewhat of a recessionary dip in uh, open source and this is putting the squeeze on the developers here so but if we go to and follow on KDE and see my version of KDE pops up in Ubuntu as Kabuntu and I went and did a little bit of a, uh, a looking Lou on that and found an article on datamation.com uh, about the death of Kubuntu and the death of the KDE desktop and well, apparently well, the, the, the Canonical is one of the major developers behind KDE at least a lot of its funding comes from there a number of its funding comes from the amount certain amount of us funny comes from here. It's got a letter on its uh, Kubuntu site here. Uh, it says, Kubuntu's new future. And this is sort of, this is date published on uh, February 7th. And it says here, today, uh, Jonathan R Riddell announced that our favorite, distro, dist, Linux, our favorite Linux, Linux distro will no longer have the same support that it had for almost its entire history. It's very sad news to hear Kubuntu will no longer have the official status it has had for many years. So what this basically means is that it's sort of backing away from its KDE, KDE desktop uh, distribution known as Kubuntu. And anyone who has been watching what's going on with, with, with Ubuntu knows that it, it, it did the same thing uh, actually uh, more than a year ago to GNOME. It threw GNOME off its desktop in favor of a new golden child uh, that is developing from its from within its own from within its own ranks called the Unity Desktop. 
the Unity desktop on both 11.4 and 11.10 got ripped to shreds in the reviews. It is not up to par. What's going on in the community here, and this does seem to be the case here, it seems to be a case of ego. And this is something that can kill a distribution, it can kill the environment. Uh, open source, and, and I think most things that you see in, in, in technology is open source to a certain degree. Even when um, they were developing the atomic bomb and everything was supposed to be secret, the scientists were sharing between Germany and, and, and England, you know, but in Germany and the United States, they were sharing notes back and forth with, with each other. The difference was that one side, the American side, would be experimentalists, and the German side were the theorists. And so, if 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 something didn't go according to theory, they chucked the experiment and stuck stuck with the theory. They assumed that the experiment had been had a was a mis, was a mistake. So everything was geared towards the theory when when, they, when they're develop, developing uh, developing the, their atomic bomb, and because things didn't work out, they were convinced that the theory was correct, that uh, that there was no nu nuclear bomb to be had. But the experiments, the experimentalists on the other side uh, pushed forward and sort of started tweaking things and uh, uh, tweaking their theory. And because they were experimentally led, they wound up with the atomic bomb as opposed to uh, the other group who wound up with nothing and wound up on the losing side of the war. The same thing can be said uh, for the Linux open source environment, open source, open source environment. If you have, and this is what's happened in the Ubuntu environment, when Canonical announced that they were moving towards Unity and really started doing what it did to, uh, to first know the GNOME desktop and then the KDE desktop, A lot of people jump ship, and there are now a number of distros, including, you know, Black Mint. There's, I think, this uh, Waffle Gen 2. Uh, there's a whole, oh, and there's another one called Poseidon. These are all uh, are sort of offshoots of the uh, Ubuntu uh, 10.4. This is when they began jumping ship on. 10.4, a lot of people started leaving Ubuntu. Uh, and the thing is, the, Ubuntu really hasn't uh, realized that uh, its move to Unity and now its move on KDE is going to really, you know, unless Unity really steps up and does what open source is supposed to do, and that means unite all the platforms, uh, then what's going to happen is a large chunk of its community, its user base, is going to disappear. And as I said, this is already started to happen. But it also gives you uh, an idea that you really don't have to jump ship that much. That Linux code, as long as Ubuntu sticks with its its um, Linux base and doesn't really go fully proprietary on on uh, Un Unity. And this is what, this is sort of what the uh, Canonicals move has done is it's starting to do what Microsoft and Google have had done have, have done, and they're starting to, to they started off on open source. Once they got popular enough, uh, they started closing off their code and developing their own things. Uh, this is what Unity is. Unity is uh, the Canonical what Android is to Google and what uh, Windows was. Uh, to Microsoft, uh, it, it had the standard base, and then it started slowly but surely uh, pulling the cold together. And, and it, when it got popular enough, it started closing things off. And uh, this is a little bit of a history for those of you who don't know that Microsoft actually started and pulled a lot of its code from open source environments, uh, the shareware environments, before it shut off its code. And started doing all this, uh, you know, um, this cool copyright business. This copyright stuff is is basically new. It's not what it, it's not uh, what Microsoft actually started out with. Um, even Word in Microsoft's office was taken 
from the shareware environment. They did not develop the original code. This, in, this is also true for Internet Explorer. Um, I have a book in my library that uh, this is way back in the day um, when they were developing NT that um, sort of brags that uh, the Microsoft team uh, hacked and essentially uh, that their DOS and Windows was essentially uh, D wasn't uh, MS DOS, it was DR DOS, Digital Research DOS, and this is how they started. They st Microsoft has had a history, and you can see this in any 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 of the software environments or any of the, even the, the technology. Technology has to, to to be a free environment, and it does this uh, by looking around, and seeing what it can do. And the the what patents and te and patent uh, and patented te patented technology has done is closed us off. It's closed off the free environment. It closed off that technology needs to grow on. So this is it. This is where Canonical is going. This is sort of I think what's, what's troubling everybody. But uh, what I've seen from a number of the community already. Uh, People who like Ubuntu and don't like Unity can pull the Unity desktop desktop off and put GNOME back on again. And that's actually what a lot of people have done is they've stuck with Ubuntu. They simply pull the Unity desktop off and put GNOME back on. And so this this is sort of I think the path that uh, people who want KDE KDE for Ubuntu is it, whatever desktop it's going to come with simply pull the desktop off and put Kubuntu on and put KDE on and that's that sort of you know a, a lot of other distributions do, do that too like BSD, FreeBSD free and OpenBSD uh, don't necessarily come with a desktop um, you can pull a desktop from anywhere from, from, from KDE to GNOME you know they, they sort of don't they don't pre-package um, their software their their base with any form of desktop is something that you can choose later on to do and I think this is sort of where um, if Ubuntu uh, keeps their base, their un their Ubuntu base open and allows you to put whatever desktop you want on it, and that's, this is sort of how Linux works, then there's not going to be an issue. The issue will come, this is an if down the road, if they really start uh, closing off and becoming a proprietary code rather than open code but, but I think by that, that that time I think there'll be enough uh, bases around that um, that sort of have jumped off the uh, the canonical bandwagon that it won't matter if canonical goes proprietary because there'll be enough to sort there's enough enough to pull to pull, to, to, to pull from I mean I think e e even canonical doesn't Develop its own original source. It pulls from De from the Debian platform, so that's why the, the their files and their files, uh, their package files have the, the uh, ending D E B rather than the uh, Red Hat RP the Red Hat R RPM. So my choice is going to be I'm going to stick with uh, Ubuntu for now. Uh, and put the KDE desktop on it, so it's going to be Kubuntu. I don't really see an issue uh, with whatever they do on terms of the desk, terms of the desktop, uh, because uh, whatever they choose to do, I'm not going to choose to do that. I'm going to keep keep on with uh, KDE. So this is sort of the path that we're going to go. We're going to go down the KDE path. Uh, we're going to look at the sound and pulse audio issues. That try to make uh, pulse audio more compatible with uh, all the other sound sound formats that are out there for Linux and there are no there's actually two forms of jack there's jack 1 and jack 2 uh, and ironically enough jack 1 is not compatible with jack 2 they're not compatible with each other so the, the goal is now is I think as you work work with these the, the, I'm trying to work on it basically uh, go from Caden live to a video desktop that you have a whole suite of video editing 
and video production uh, software pulled together and that everything works well together and that they, the, the beginning bits and pieces of it are already there it just sort of needs to be pulled together so this is where we're going in uh, the next uh, episode we will look further into some of the details I think next episode uh, we'll spend an entire episode looking at the sound issues surrounding Pulse Audio and uh, also all right we'll see you next week Speech rules here at Democratic Earth.